Okay, now we know quite a lot about motion. We have learned that motion can be of two types, one where the object covers equal distance in equal intervals of time, that's called uniform motion, and the one where an object covers unequal distance in equal intervals of time, that's called a non-uniform motion. Sounds simple enough, right? But here comes the question, how do we actually know whether a motion is uniform or non-uniform? For that, we need to measure two important factors. Distance, to see whether it's equal or unequal. And the most important one, yes, the time. Because only when we know both distance and time, we can say whether an object is in uniform or non-uniform motion. So how do we measure time? Well, that's the crucial part of understanding motion. Time and distance go in hand in hand. Now think about this. We see so many objects in motion in our daily life. Sometimes we say that object is really slow. Other times we say he is walking very slow. And then we say she is running fast. But what do we really mean when we say something is slow or fast? What exactly are we talking about? Take a moment to think. Yes, it has everything to do with time. When something takes a longer time, we call it slow. And when something take, gets done in shorter amount of time, we call it fast. So to truly understand fast and slow motion, we need to know how much time is being taken. That's why measuring time is such an important part of understanding motion. So how do we actually measure time? Do we have any devices for that? Yes, we do. That device is called a stopwatch. We often use stopwatch to measure time. Stopwatches like these are often used to measure the time interval between two events. Here you can see two types of stopwatches. One is an analog stopwatch and the other is a digital stopwatch. Let's start with the analog stopwatch. It has a needle that rotates from 0 to 60 when you press the start button and it stops when you hit stop. When the needle completes one full round, that is 60 seconds or one minute. If it goes around again, that's two minutes and so on. Here, let me show you a stopwatch in action. You press the button, the needle starts moving. Let us count it. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it stops at seven seconds, right? It has measured up to seven seconds. So like this one, we have digital stopwatch as well. It works the same way with the start and stop button, but instead of a needle, it displays the exact numbers like the one you see here. This can be seen on mobile phones and smartwatches as well, right? In our daily lives, we use stopwatches for all sorts of things. Measuring pulse rate, checking temperature with temp thermometer, keeping the time, uh, tracking performances during the races, or even we might just see how long it takes to cook something, right? And depending on the situation, we express time in different units. The basic unit of time is the seconds. We sometimes say the song is 4 minutes 10 seconds. So we have another unit, 4 minutes right? It's a longer unit, right? Song is longer. So which means it has four minutes and 10 seconds. Then maybe a movie is three hours long. That's bigger unit. That's further longer than minutes, right? And we say, sir, we need to do the finish the homework. We need two days. So that is again a longer period of time. So you might have already learned this in your previous classes. We know that 60 seconds is one minute. 60 minute is one hour and 24 hours make one day, right? Now let's see a stopwatch in action. Let's consider a simple scenario and actually start using a stopwatch. We have three children, red, let's call them red, blue and yellow, running a 20 meter race. And here we have three stopwatches placed. All right. Okay, let's start. Okay, you can clearly see that the blue is the fastest. Uh, blue finishes in four seconds and yellow comes next in eight seconds and uh, the red 10 seconds. So what do we conclude? Red took the maximum time. So we call the red the slowest. Blue took the least time. So we say blue is the fastest and yellow is somewhere in between, but still slow compared to blue, right? So yeah, this shows us how time gives us important way to understand motion. Now, if you think about it, when we say something is slow or fast, we are actually referring to time it takes to cover a certain distance. Did you, do you get it? It's a combination of distance and time that helps us figure out whether a motion is slow or fast. And we are going to look at that more closely in the next part, which will give us actually uh, another parameter of motion, that's speed.